Okay, in today's lecture we're going to uh, study how to draw an electron configuration, which we already learned in the previous video. But I'm also going to talk about some exceptions to the rule, to the pattern rather. And those exceptions are usually driven by the consideration that um, when you have half-filled orbitals or filled orbitals, the atom tends to be stabler. An atom, so now I've noted here, an atom having half-filled or filled sublevels is slightly more stable or less reactive than an atom without a filled or half-filled sublevel. So as an example, if we wrote the configuration of chromium, which has 24 protons, and it's a neutral atom, it would also have 24 electrons. We follow the pattern of the filling of the electron shells. Remember, these uh, numbers represent solutions to the Schrodinger wave equation. They are like... Uh, enter a, uh, when you used to go to grade three, they would give you an equation something like this with a box equals some number, and then they'd put a letter inside it, and then they would get you to say n equals three. Now, if you can imagine putting uh, two letters in there, your answers could be, uh, t would be one plus two, it could be two plus one, it could be 3 plus 0, it could even be 0 plus 3. So you have multiple solutions that would be correct to put into that box. So here we have a very simple equation. Obviously the Schrodinger wave equation is not simple, but the, the results that you get, the answers to that equation, represent various orbital shapes that you can get when, um, as you pile the electrons on, around the atom. We know that uh, S orbitals are spherical, P orbitals are Leibniz gate, which means they look like figure eights. The d orbitals also are Leibniz gate, but slightly more elongated. They're a bit longer, and one of them actually has a toroidal shape. It looks like a donut mixed with a Leibniz gate. And the f orbitals are very oblong Leibniz gates. They're very stretched out and skinny, and they're oriented all in different directions so that the electrons don't interfere with each other. So that's what the this diagram, this filling diagram, uh, symbolizes. The shell filling mnemonic just helps us to rem or remember how the shells of the electrons normally fill up. I also would like to point out that there are no 8s orbitals. Uh, 8s would mean that there was an element below francium in the periodic table, and there is no such thing. But I kept in 8s just to preserve the pattern to make it have a nice triangular wedge shape uh, that's easy to remember. So getting back to chromium, the, the shell filling mnemonic for chromium predicts that it will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Now 3s2 would bring us down to, if we count on the side, the, the period kill tells us the quantum number, 1, 2, 3. 3s2 would give, you, give us magnesium. The, all of these are s1, all of these are s2. When you traverse d blocks, it, it goes from d1 all the way to d10. Uh, and this is p block because what happens here is the p block is filling p1, p2, p3, p4, p5, and p6. Remember I said earlier that uh, the P6, or maybe I didn't say that earlier, but I'm saying it now, P6 is a very stable configuration. The noble gas configuration is the most stable, uh, and uh, most atoms will try to, or will usually end up adopting that configuration. For example, when chlorine gains one electron, it goes from P5 to P6. When oxygen becomes an anion, it becomes oxide, and it goes from P4 to P6. When nitrogen becomes an anion, uh, an anion, becomes negative 3, and it goes from P3 to P6. So you see they're all becoming aliceoelectronic with the closest noble gas. Getting back to chromium, once we get to 3s2, uh, sorry, once we get to 4s2, we know that there's four more electrons to add to the diagram. So it ends up being 3d4 as predicted by this diagram. But as it turns out, uh, it's actually 4s1, 3d5. Why is that? Because half-filled shells are more stable than a full shell um, if you can get two of them. See, so you have two half-filled shells, that's more stable than a filled shell and an incomplete shell. So the atom ends up having, having a, uh, a 4s1 configuration. And perhaps it's due to the fact that uh, that 4s, that those two electrons in the s orbital have to spin pair in order to, to stay in the s orbital. So it's probably energetically more favorable for them to not spin pair and they each go into the empty d orbitals. There's five d orbitals, so you can have one electron in each orbital unpaired. And they don't, tar they don't, they don't start to spin pair until you get the sixth electron and it becomes d6. And that would happen in the next, uh, the next element. That would be in uh, chromium. After chromium we have manganese. Obviously 
that manganese is actually uh, D5, 4S2, D5. Anyway, continuing, uh, the next example is to find the configuration of copper, silver, and gold. And I pick these three coinage metals because they're particularly stable. They don't, go, they don't undergo uh, oxidation easily. And part of the reason is because they have a stable electronic configuration. For copper with 29 electrons, the, uh, the configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, following the pattern as usual. Once we get to 4s2, which is 1, 2, 3, 4 red calcium, we're only um, 9 jumps away from copper. So we would expect it to be 4s2, 3d9. But what really happens is an electron is promoted from the s orbital into the 3d orbital, so that now this is a, a, a completely filled orbital, and I guess there's a certain amount of symmetry that helps reduce the strain in the atom, because I just finished saying there that spin pairing is in some ways energetically costly. Perhaps there's another factor in here that is also uh, prevailing under these conditions where having them all spin paired creates a kind of symmetry that reduces the energy of the atom. Whatever the reason is, this atom will have a filled shell with a half-filled shell as opposed to uh, a filled with an incomplete. And that's the actual configuration of copper. With silver, silver has 47 electrons. And I'll point out a trick to you. When you're, when you're trying to write out the, uh, the electron configuration of the atoms, keep on adding electrons following the pattern. You can even follow the pattern blindly until you get to the point where you're at the uh, alkaline earth metal that is immediately preceding the atom that you're trying to find the shell of uh, the the, the, the um, configuration for. Okay, we, uh, we got cut off, so I started over with silver. Uh, we're going to look at silver because it's got 47 electrons uh, when it's a neutral atom. And we, we follow the pattern that we have in the mnemonic, 1s2, 2s2. And I was saying, before I continue, that when you want to find an, uh, an atom, you go to the last alkaline earth metal that just precedes it. So we're doing silver right now. So once, once we get the strontium, we're nine boxes away from silver. We know that strontium is one, two, three, four, five, S2. How do I know that it's one, two, three, four, five? Well, the, the period numbers correspond to the, the last strontium level that's filled. So hydrogen is one S1, lithium is one, um, two S1, then sodium is 3S1, and it's also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and those is going to be 5S2, because it's in the second box of S block. So once we hit 5S2, we know there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 more jumps to get to silver. So let's go all the way to 5S2 quickly. 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, 3D10. After 3D, we have 4P6. 5s2, and then we're going to say after 5 after 5s we have uh, 4d9 would be the prediction from the shell filling mnemonic. That would be the normal pattern. But what actually happens is you see what we have here is a filled s shell and an incomplete d shell. But if we promote one electron from the 5s shell into the d shell, we'll have all, all the rest is the same. 5s1. 4D10. Now we'll have a half filled and a filled shell, and that's what actually happens in the, in, in the atom. And we can rewrite this in a shorthand form. You take the last um, noble gas that's closest to the end of the configuration, which would be 4P6. Anything with P6 is going to be noble gas. 4P6 means it's 1, 2, 3, 4 krypton, and then the rest is written out. So you can say in square bracket, silver is represented by square bracket krypton, uh, 5s1, 4d10. And there's your shorthand version of uh, your silver, the silver's configuration. Now let's try gold. Gold has a symbol AU, and it has 79 protons, if I remember correctly, and therefore it'll have 79 electrons if it's neutral. The closest um, alkaline earth metal to gold would be barium, and it ends in 6s2. So we're going to write out all the way to 6s2 without even uh, worrying. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d10, 
After 4d10, we have 5p6. Uh, 7. 5p6. Did I skip something? 4d10, 5p6. No, 6s2, right? Right, 6s2. And then we're going to count off from 6s2. Here we are at Marion, 6s2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. S2, and we have 1. Oh, but then we have to go all through here to the F block. Don't forget that. C goes 57, 58 through there. You're going to have to have a 4F14 in there. And then you go back, uh, and then you count from left, and then see how many spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 6 has 2, 4F14. And then you would expect, I wish I'd given myself a little bit more space, uh, 5D9. But again, what we notice is that, and this might be disturbing to some, the, four, the 4F is left untouched. But what we, what we do have is the 6S level, which is very close in energy to the D levels. So that S is going to lose an electron, promote it to the, to the D level. So we'll have a filled, uh, filled sub-level and a half-filled. So gold will have all the same pattern again, except now it'll be 6S1, 4F14, 5D10. And if we rewrite that in shorthand, the closest uh, noble gas is xenon, which would be 5P6, up to 5P6. So square bracket xenon, uh, 6S1, 4F14, 5D10 will give you the electron shell filling mnemonic, and that will give you the, uh, the electron sublevel pattern for gold. So you always write the square bracket around the, when you do the shorthand. But you should be familiar how to do this part before you attempt to do that part, just to make sure you, you know how they fill. Uh, of course, keep in mind, S levels hold a maximum of 2, P levels hold a maximum of 6, D levels hold a maximum of 10, and F levels hold a maximum of 14 electrons. So I want you to notice a pattern in the periodic table. You'll notice that S block is 2 blocks wide. Why? Because it takes only 2 electrons to fill an S, uh, an S shell. The D block is 10 blocks wide because it takes 10 electrons to fill a D. 6 wide for P, uh, P block and 14 wide for F block. So the, the periodic table is arranged according to the filling of the sublevels in, um, in the electrons.